What's going on everybody out there? This is Popular Stranger and welcome to Spartan Stadium, home of the Michigan State Spartans and week number 11 of our second season in this Northwestern Dynasty for NCAA Football 14. This is episode number 33 and we are now on the road taking on Michigan State who is not very good this year. But this is going to be a really good game, so I hope you guys do enjoy it. We started out with the ball right here, running a little crossing route with our two halfbacks, picking up the first down. And now we're going to send a running back in motion. Look for a player on the slant, and a Michigan State defender is going to make a diving interception. This game did not start off very, very well. And you see we're in the number three spot, and I'll get to that because that's definitely an improvement since the last game you guys saw. And I'll explain why we've moved up not too uh, long into this video. But if you remember the first season last year when we took on Michigan State, we had a chance. We were making a run at that BCS National Championship at a BCS Bowl. And we were upset by Michigan State, a team that we were beating most of the game. And they somehow came back and not only tied it up in the fourth quarter, but then took the lead off of a pick six. And it was just a heartbreaking loss so even though Michigan State is one in seven this year we know that we cannot take them lightly and so we did dodge a bullet after that first turnover and got the ball back we're moving up the field again now in the snow we got to try to keep it on the ground but we're going to force one here and the pass is tipped and it's now fourth and seven we're going to go for it and another bad decision there by Trevor Simeon another tapped tipped pass and it's a turnover on down, so this game is not getting off to a good start. As I said, Michigan State is 1-7 this year. Very, very surprising at that record. And look at this Hail Mary of a bomb in the snow. He's going to catch it, break a tackle, and we're now down 7-0. So one of those two mistakes has eventually caught us. Keith Mumphrey with the touchdown reception on kind of a broken coverage. So we do get the ball back with Michigan State. 1-7, 0-5 in the Big Ten Conference. Their only win came all the way back in Week 4 against Wyoming. And oh my God, there's another turnover. So two turnovers, one turnover on downs. Down 7 to nothing, and we are just not looking good right now. Um, so Michigan State beat Wyoming. They've lost to teams like Oregon, Michigan, Penn State, and Iowa, who we beat two weeks ago. Week number 9, Iowa was undefeated. A really, really big win for us. If you guys missed that episode, make sure you go back and check it out. And that made us improve to 6-2 and two where we stand today. 3-1 and one in the Big Ten. And uh, last week, during week number 10, we had a bye week, so we did not have a game. And before that week, we were not ranked at number 3. And you see we're there now. You also see Michigan State missing the kick, failing to take a 10-point lead. And I was in command right now against Wisconsin as we get the little game break there. I was 7-1. Again, that only loss to us. So after all the mistakes, we're still in the second quarter here. Only down one touchdown. It's time to feed Trayvon Green and let him go to work. So during the bye week, there were two major upsets uh, that happened. Well, I don't want to say major, but they really helped us out. TCU beat Oklahoma, who was number two at the time, I believe. And not only did they beat Oklahoma, but that caused them, look at Pierre Youngblood tying the game up, TCU beating Oklahoma caused them to jump over Ohio State for that number one spot. And TCU is now the new number one team in the nation. They are undefeated. Also, Alabama lost, who I believe was ranked fourth last week. And with that loss, it allowed us to get into the top three, so we have a shot still, even with two losses, two really, really losses to good teams. But we do have a chance here still to make definitely a BCS Bowl, but still have hopes for a BCS National Championship. Now we are ranked third in the nation. Oh my God, the screenplay killed us this game. As you see, they got a big conversion there on fourth down. But we are ranked third in the nation. They run the screen again. Oh my God, and look at the blocking downfield. We're quickly back down now, 14-7. to seven. Uh, But we're fourth in the BCS ranking, so that's very, very important. We do need to jump two different teams to get into the national championship, and we're not going to be able to do that by losing to Michigan State, a 1-17 team 
who was only averaging about 21.4 points per game, 367 yards, and they also give up 25.9 yards per game. Not really ranked very well here. You see we are ticking down till halftime, trying to put some points on the board. Malin Jones with a tough carry, picks up eight, and then we're going to run the uh, opposite play where we pass the ball, pick up the first down. We're going to do it once more because we were out of timeouts or only had one timeout trying to conserve some clock. We're going to take a gamble here with zero on the clock. Trayvon crosses the goal line and we are able to tie it up right at halftime so the game is not out of reach. We're coming into this game ranked 52nd in the nation with 27.6 points per game. 340 yards is our average per game. The defense still holding up pretty well, even though they look terrible on this play right here, giving up another big-time touchdown pass. But we're averaging, allowing only 261.5 yards per game, 60.6 rushing yards per game. Both of those statistics rank us at number one in the nation. Very, very good. We have to do a, uh, we're down seven right now, a good kick return, something you guys have not seen much of really both seasons this game is really hard in my opinion to get good kick returns against the computer but we're going to keep it on the ground here and uh actually a little swing pass to pierre youngblood um down seven in the third quarter game obviously not yet out of reach we're going to look for malin jones there and instead we find tony jones and now we're going to run that fake jet sweep, hand it off to Trayvon, who's going to pick up a first down, get us to the one-yard line. Now second and goal, we run the stretch play, cut back inside, and we are once again tied up, this time at 21. Some week 11 scores that we should get into. Number 10, Georgia Tech beat number 24, Clemson, 42-17. to Georgia Tech is one of those teams, and look at this, another screen play for big yardage. Georgia Tech is one of those teams that have been winning some games surprisingly, and we got to watch out for them because they could creep themselves up into a BCS bowl game. Number 23, Georgia beat number 18, Auburn, 26-14. to And then in the only upset of the week, unless this game happens to be an upset because we're now down seven once again, but the only upset that I'm going to speak of right now, my old team, my team from NCAA 13, Tulsa, upset number six, Eastern Carolina University, 34 to 28. So those are your scores. We get back into our game here as Kyle Prater gets a big reception. We're in the fourth quarter, down seven. We're going to run the option here, keep it with Trayvon Green. He's going to come up short of the first down, but a big gain on first down. And then we're going to get him to get the ball to him in the air. Actually, that's Malin Jones who gets the ball on the little angle route coming out of the backfield. A big-time reception, 28-27, extra point pending. We would get it. Now fourth down, and we should have had an interception there. I was coming for the ball, and they're going to try to run another screen play on third and long. This time, I'm finally all over it. We force the punt. Time ticking down. We're going to get the ball back. I decide not to try to receive the ball because I just did not want any type of muff or crazy play to happen we're going to do a little shovel pass here to Trayvon off the screen play he gets knocked out of bounds after picking up a lot of yards two minutes 35 seconds left swing route over to Malin Jones who had a very very good game for our backup running back he picks up a first down then we're going to look over the middle on the slant route to Prater another first down a minute 34 in ticking we run the option Simeon keeps it slide short of the first down, but that's all right because we're going to give it to Trayvon on the very next play of big, big chunk of yards inside the red zone, inside the 10-yard line. It's now second and goal. We give it to Malin Jones, and he's going to cross the goal line for the second time today, and we have taken the lead now with 30 seconds to go. It's a 35-28 to 28 game. Everything should be all wrapped up, right? Not the screen pass again. Oh, my God, missed tackles here. Huge, huge gain, 20 seconds and ticking. He's breaking more tackles, finally knocked out of bounds, 19 seconds to go. First and 10, Michigan State has all their timeouts. If they get in the end zone and tie it up, I might just cry right here on YouTube, guys. Now it's first and 10 once more, 10 seconds to go. A heave towards the end zone, nobody's there, and this is the last play of the game. No, it's not. I lied. <laughs> but they get another pass right there inside the five. Here's the last play of the game. Cook drops back pass trying to find a guy. He does find somebody, but somehow we manage to tackle him outside of the end zone. And we hang on, get the win. 
against 1-7 Michigan State, who's now 1-8. Trayvon with another huge game, a couple touchdowns, over 130 yards on the ground. We survive and prove to 7-2, and 4-1 and in the Big Ten now, and we have Michigan next week. I look forward to it. I'm out, guys. Peace.